What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodeView.com and in this video, we're going to look at searching NumPy arrays in NumPy. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at searching through NumPy arrays. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at searching through NumPy array. So we have a NumPy array, it's full of stuff. We want to search for something specific in that array and pull it out or do something with it or whatever. That's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other NumPy videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm just calling it searcher.py and we're importing NumPy as np as always. And I'm just gonna create a quick NumPy array like we've done many times. So let's go np.array. And inside of here, let's just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Something simple. So let's say we want to find all the threes in this NumPy array or whatever you're looking for, right? Well, we're going to use something called the where function. So let's create a variable to sort of store this information. I'm just going to call it X and we're going to call np.where. Remember, we're calling np on everything because we imported NumPy as np. And inside of here, we just create some sort of condition that this will search for. So we're gonna say where np1 equals three. So we're saying, hey, look through np1 and return all of the index numbers that have three. And you'll notice this is gonna return an index number. Actually, it's gonna return a tuple of an index number. And let's just kind of look and see what this is. So let's print out x. But first, let's also print out our numpy array just so we can see it. So, okay, that looks good. Head over to our terminal and let's run python searcher.py. And here's our original array. And we're saying, hey, where is three? And it's saying it's at array index number two. Remember these start at zero, so zero, one, two. And there's our three. It also gives the data type. So this is an integer of 64 bits, right? So cool. Now you'll notice this is a tuple. So there are two things in here, this first thing, right? And then a second thing, which is just blank, right after this comma here. So we can pull out just this if we want by simply calling the zeroth item of this tuple, right? So if we head back over to our code, we could say, hey, let's print out the zeroth item of that tuple. So if we save this, come back over here, run this again, now it just prints out the position, the index number two, right? So zero, one, two. So very cool. Now, what if we have more than one three? In here, we don't, but we could. Let's go ahead and change this a little and let's add a three. See what happens. We're not gonna make any other change. We're saying, hey, still print out the zeroth item. So let's come over here and here we see now a two and a 10 because here we have zero, one, two. There's a three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The tenth item here is again the three. So just keep in mind, this is returning the index number, the position in the array where these are sitting. It's not returning the thing itself. It's not returning the threes. We could get it to return the threes if we wanted to. So let's say, let's say we want to return those threes, right? I don't know why you would want to, but we could just come down here and say print np1. So, okay, what part of np1 do we want to return? We want to return the x to the zeroth part. So we could just pass that in like that. So it's starting to look a little weird, but this should return a couple of threes. And we see sure enough, three and three at the two and the 10th position. The two -th position is three and the 10th position is three. I don't know why you would wanna do that, but you could. So very simple to search for things and that's all there is to it. Now we could also get a little crazy here, right? Let's say we wanna return the even items. So two, four, six, eight, even items. How could we do that? Very easy, we could just call this again. Let's go np.where. And this is just like any other conditional statement you might have. You can do all kinds of conditional things. So we can use uh, like a modulus to find the remainder. So we're np1 modulus two equals zero. That's gonna return even numbers. So if we divide two by two, it goes in once with no remainder. If we, return, if we divide four by two, it returns two, no remainder. Same thing with six, same, same thing with eight, same thing with 10. If we try to divide three by two, 
two goes into three one time with one remainder. So that's not an even number, right? So pretty simple. And here, let's just print, uh, well, let's print our MP1 just so we can spot check this. And if we want to print this out, we would just, again, print out Y to the zeroth item, right? Okay, so let's come back here and let's, start, and let's run this guy again. So, okay, it's saying the one, three, five, seven, and nine position have even numbers. So the one th position, that's zero, one, two is an even number. Two, three, four is an even number. Five, four, five, six is an even number. Uh, I'm losing track. Six, seven, eight is an even number. Eight, nine, that's an even number. And three is not. So, Again, very cool. Let's just comment this out and let's return. We could do the exact same thing with odd numbers. So same exact thing, return odd items. So let's go Z equals MP dot where, and here we're MP1 modulus two equals one, right? So that will return odd items. And so we can print MP1 just to compare and make sure this is correct. And let's return Z to the zeroth item. Same deal, come back over here, run the sky again. So here, the zeroth item one, that's an odd number. The twoth item, so zero, one, two, three is an odd number, five is an odd number, there we go. Uh, seven is an odd number, there we go. Nine is an odd number, there we go. And three is an odd number, there we go. So all kinds of stuff you could do, all kinds of different conditional statements you can run with this to find any sort of thing you wanna do. But if you're searching for something, just remember the where. Remember, it returns the index item number, not the thing itself. Just sort of keep that in mind. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.